Russia ramps up its deadly assault on Ukraine. Negotiators from Moscow and Kyiv are meeting once again to try to reach a diplomatic end to the war. The talks restarted today. An aide to the Ukrainian President Zelensky, who was at the meeting, says that, the, that they discussed a potential ceasefire and troop withdrawal. But the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, says Moscow still needs Ukraine to demilitarize and abandon its efforts to join NATO. Let's bring in Ivo Dalder now. He's a former U.S. ambassador to NATO during the Obama administration. Ambassador, thank you. Z Zelensky's aide says the talks have been difficult and vicious, but he insists there's still room for compromise. Do you believe it? Well, I hope so. I mean, clearly uh, getting a, a political solution to this that lets, leads to the withdrawal of Russian forces and a return to uh, at least the, the, the status quo ante before, uh, before the war started would be a terrific thing, given all the damage uh, that is being done. Uh, but I do think the two sides are, are pretty far apart, and uh, they can't even agree on, on a local ceasefire to allow humanitarian aid to come into places like Mariupol that have now been besieged for over a week. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think we have to be realistic. The chances are small. What kind of message do, do you think President Biden is sending by going to Europe, and what, if anything, will it actually accomplish? I think it's an important message by the president to say that uh, we stand with our allies, uh, first of all, in NATO, which is why he's having a, uh, a meeting of NATO. It's very important that NATO address and start adjusting to the new reality of a, uh, of a strong, militarily capable uh, Russia that uh, is obviously willing to use force to get what it, uh, what it wants. Uh, and that we adjust to that. So that's number one. And number two, he's going to also have a meeting with our European uh, allies in the European Union. Mm. And it's a, it's the very sanctions and economic steps that Europe and the United States and, and many other countries have been taken that is really putting the squeeze on Russia. Uh, and ultimately, it's those sanctions and the political isolation uh, that we are engaged in through our diplomacy uh, that hopefully will uh, will lead to a change in, in Russian policy, if not a change in Russian leadership. Quickly, before we go, the, lots of pressure, no Putin movement. What moves the needle? You know, I think the only thing that moves the needle is for the people of Russia uh, and those around Putin to realize that uh, he has led them into a dead end. Uh, a very costly dead end for the economy, for the people, uh, for the Russian soldiers and Russian families, and of course for Ukrainians, and to say uh, enough is enough and it's time to move on. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.